Hello everybody, and welcome back to Game Critiques. Metroid 5, better known as Metroid Dread, was finally announced last week after nearly two decades of waiting for the story to continue. So today, I'll be ranking Metroids 1 through 4. I personally played through all of them in the past week in anticipation of Metroid Dread, so I'll be able to give my fresh thoughts on each title. For Metroids 1 and 2, I'll be solely ranking the remakes, Zero Mission and Samus Returns, instead of the originals. I think few would argue that Zero Mission makes the NES original totally obsolete, and while Samus Returns isn't necessarily an improvement in every way, they definitely mess up some of the atmospheric moments near the end. It's overall a much better title due to how it plays in my opinion, and I'd still recommend it over Return of Samus to anybody. I also want to specify that I think all of these games at least have some great moments, and I don't dislike any of them. However, I will be rating all of them without taking into consideration their time of release. I highly suspect many will disagree with this list. However, I encourage you to hear me out. And again, I don't think any of these games are bad, and I totally understand any one of them being somebody's favorite in the series. With that out of the way, let's get started with number 4, my least favorite 2D Metroid title. Number 4, Metroid 3, better known as Super Metroid. I know that this is a fan favorite title in the series. I know that many consider this to be one of the best games ever made, and I can understand why. This game has some really great elements. The atmosphere is incredible, it's absolutely unmatched by any other game of its era. The way the areas connect to one another is really clever, and the different abilities you unlock are mostly very satisfying. The story is interesting and told in a clever way, the art is great to this day, the bosses, especially the final boss, are really fun and have great designs. The callbacks to the original Metroid are pretty neat too. However, I have a few major issues with this game that prevent me from calling it the masterpiece that most seem to believe it is. Firstly, the movement. Super Metroid is very slow and very floaty. It also lacks abilities like grabbing ledges that, with the remakes, are present in every other title. Moving through the world of Super Metroid just feels clunky. There are some movement abilities that feel really bad too. The space jump timing feels off compared to every other entry in the series. The run button and its uses in platforming are very odd and probably should have been explained somewhere in the game. And wall jumping is bizarrely difficult. The timing is just super tight. I've said this before in some of my other videos. But I truly believe movement is vital to a game like this with any sort of decent focus on platforming. In most great platformers and most great metroidvanias, Navigating the world is fun by itself. In Super Metroid, having to deal with the movement is an annoyance that gets in the way of exploration. Super Metroid also has some problems with how it handles some of its abilities. It doesn't tell you anything about what most of them are or how they're used. If this was my first Metroid, how would I know that something called a gravity suit makes me immune to lava? How am I supposed to know what a spacer is? I get that the game wants to encourage experimentation and that getting lost is part of the appeal and adds to the atmosphere. But there's a line that Super Metroid crosses. I'll get back to that in just a second though, I also want to mention how some of the abilities are really underwhelming. It's always disappointing when you finally find a new ability, and it's something super situational like the grapple beam, which doesn't even feel good to use. Worst of all is the x-ray scope, which actually makes the game worse in my opinion. It just slows everything down even more, and is used as an excuse to hide more vital paths between random walls and the like. That leads into my last major problem with Super Metroid. Lots of the progression in Super Metroid is built around stuff that seems inconsistent. When I solved a puzzle to find a way forward, more often than not I was more frustrated than satisfied. Every other tile that can be broken by a power bomb is revealed by the x-ray scope. So why would I think a power bomb would blow up this random glass tube when scanning it shows nothing. In one room, there's a robot enemy, a wall that can be power bombed, and a bunch of sand behind that wall. When I first walked in, I killed the enemy, blew up the wall, saw the sand, and it seemed I needed some item to get through it or that something else in the level would trigger its removal. That's how every other situation in the game works. So I left to go look for something else. An hour later, after having exhausted every other path in the area, I found myself back in the room trying anything out of desperation. This is when I found one of the worst solutions to a puzzle I've seen in any game. Despite destroying almost every other enemy, and the robot enemy having no indication that it wouldn't be destroyed by this, the power bomb, randomly, does not affect the robot. 
despite no other enemy being able to interact with the world and destroy tiles. This random robot, for no reason, breaks the sand. And that is the main path forward, it unlocks an important upgrade. That's just ridiculous. The game is just consistently inconsistent with the rules for its puzzles. I didn't have to just think outside the box to solve them, I had to randomly assume that sometimes the game was just lying to me, basically. Sometimes things just didn't work the way they were established to work. That isn't fun to figure out, it's just obnoxious. Super Metroid has some great elements, and it's a good game overall, but it's massively held back by some bizarre design choices that I still can't wrap my mind around, and that's why it's at the bottom of this list. Now, on to number 3. Number 3. Metroid 4, better known as Metroid Fusion. Metroid Fusion is a very interesting game. It's one of the most bold follow-ups I've ever seen. They came back with Metroid 4 after nearly a decade since Metroid 3, and despite Metroid 3 being among the most beloved games ever made, they changed most of what people liked about the series. The main character had a new design, there was a big story focus, and it was fairly linear. I definitely appreciate these changes in theory, but in execution they don't entirely work. Metroid Fusion is kind of held back by having to be a Metroid game, and refusing to stray too far from Super Metroid in its gameplay. I'll start by going over what I like about Metroid Fusion, which is most of it. The movement is excellent, and a huge step up from Super Metroid. The ledge grab really improves things and Samus is much more responsive in this game. The horror elements are mostly implemented in an interesting way, the SAX is legitimately unnerving during at least a few of its encounters. The sound design here is particularly good. The footsteps and use of occasional voices both really add to the atmosphere. Exploring in this game is still fun, and there's still lots to discover. Fusion is also very challenging, especially with its enemy encounters and boss fights, and I appreciate that and how it relates to the narrative. And overall, the story is pretty interesting and has some great twists and turns. However, a few elements of this game just seem kind of poorly executed. Some elements of how the levels are laid out are particularly frustrating to me. The way that it keeps its Metroid roots is just bizarre. For example, Super Metroid has save rooms and map rooms, so of course this game needs them as well. In fact, every area starts with a sequence of a save room, a navigation room, which is basically a map room, and a refill station. Why isn't this all one room? Because then it wouldn't have the same rooms as Super Metroid. At least that's the only reason I can think of. This kind of stuff doesn't waste too much time, but it really is bizarre. This game also has some paths that are frustratingly obscure, similar to those of Super Metroid. There's nothing as egregious as the sand room I mentioned earlier, but especially near the end, there are some key paths that are literally just hidden behind a wall with no indication, or hidden behind a bombable block with no indication, or whatnot. The map is laid out mostly linearly. They give you a waypoint telling you where to go most of the time, but there are many elements that were designed around the other game's open worlds that are still here, for pretty much no reason. The story is also a little frustrating to me. I like how it ties into the linear gameplay thematically, but very little really makes sense from a narrative standpoint. There's a lot of weird stuff with explanations that are practically nonsensical. Why can you download the ability to use missiles? Why can absorbing a parasite refill your missile tank? It just seems like they often go out of their way to offer these nonsense explanations for things that didn't really even need explanations. You could just say there was a backup missile tank on the station. You could just have enemies drop missiles in health like the previous games. But they don't do that. The way the story is paced is pretty obnoxious too, I don't really like that most of the first half hour of a Metroid game is reading unskippable dialogue. And the way they handle Adam is just bizarre, though I can't get too much into that without going into spoiler territory. Overall, Metroid Fusion is a great 2D action game with excellent visuals, movement, and sound design but it's kind of held back by being a Metroid game. Some design choices that made sense in previous games are carried over, despite them not making sense here. I'd still recommend it, but there are better games in the series. Speaking of, let's move on to number 2. Number 2. Metroid 2, better known as Metroid Samus Returns. Samus Returns is, in my opinion, the most overlooked Metroid game, and I can understand why. It was a remake of an already overlooked Metroid game, and it came out on the 3DS after the Switch had released. It also has a much less appealing visual style than every other game in the series, and it's co-developed by Mercury Steam, largely known for working on Castlevania games that are kinda bad. 
Now, don't get me wrong, this game isn't perfect, but it's one of the best games on 3DS, and it's one of the best games in the Metroid series. Samus Returns feels great to play. It's super responsive, super fast paced, and decently challenging without being overwhelmingly difficult. Combat is less of a focus here than it was in Fusion, but it's more fun than ever. The boss fights are especially great. The 40 Metroid fights get repetitive after a while, but the final two bosses and the robot are probably my favorite three fights in the entire series. They're really unique, fun, and challenging. The story is one of the weaker elements here, but it never gets in the way of the game. It doesn't reach the highs of Super Metroid or Fusion, but it also never hits the occasional lows of Fusion. Exploration is also pretty great in this game. There are some decent and varied puzzles throughout and I was never stuck only to find a frustrating solution like walking behind a random wall, or waiting for a random enemy to break some sand. Most of the abilities are exciting to get and add to the fun of exploring the game's world. However, I do have a few minor problems with this game. The combat is mostly great, the ability to freely aim really adds to it, but the new melee counter is a tad overused. It's satisfying and is totally great in boss fights, but fighting most standard enemies boils down to waiting for them to attack so you can counter. There's lots of just standing around when you're facing a grunt one-on-one. -on -one. The abilities are mostly fun to use, but the spider ball is annoyingly slow. I can see why it never came back. And worst of all, this game doesn't quite have the great atmosphere of the other titles. The music is good but not outstanding, same with the sound design. The visuals are pretty bland, even for a 3DS game the pixel art looks much better. There's a little variety in how areas look, they're mostly made out of different colored dirt, and you never really feel lost, which is a trade-off I'm willing to make for better gameplay if necessary, but it definitely takes away from the overall vibe. Still, Metroid Samus Returns is a gem that I'd absolutely recommend to everyone. Its core gameplay is extremely fun. However, it's not the best in the series. There is one game that I believe contains both fun gameplay and an excellent atmosphere with neither getting in the way of the other like they do in most other Metroid entries. This brings us to entry number one. Number one, Metroid 1, better known as Metroid Zero Mission. Metroid Zero Mission is truly the series at its best in nearly every way. It's crazy how well this game, a remake of an NES game, holds up. The visuals are incredible, the pixel art is still great, and there's lots of environmental variety. The soundtrack is great. The movement is very responsive and snappy, and you have lots of abilities. This game is challenging but never unfair. As an action game, this game is excellent. The atmosphere is among the best in the series too. Like I said, it has the music and the visuals necessary. However, this game does something very few other games have been able to pull off. You will get lost, but it will never be for too long. And when you find the path forward, it'll always make sense. This game is just so satisfying to play in terms of combat, traversal, and exploration. It even pulls off horror better than Fusion does with the new area tacked on to the end. I'm struggling to think of anything negative to say about Zero Mission. It really does pull off both the things that Metroid occasionally excels at, without the two feeling at odds with each other like they usually do. The story in this game isn't as engrossing as that of Super or Fusion, but it's still pretty good and is particularly good in Zero Mission compared to the NES original. Metroid Zero Mission is one of the best Metroidvanias ever made, and one of the best Game Boy Advance games. I'd highly recommend it to everybody watching this video. Well, that does it for my ranking. I enjoyed all the titles, and I really can't wait for Metroid Dread. If you liked this video, I'd really appreciate it if you liked, commented, hit the notification bell, and or subscribed. I'd also recommend you check out some of my other content, like my critique of this year's E3. Thank you all for watching, have a great rest of your day!